up for a wild trip come take a ride with me the ghost biker and my guys dave and chris and escape from everyday life this is the furlough podcast Love it. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome back. We have great big news. If you're watching this, um, look in our background. We have commissioned mm-hmm. our first show piece of artwork. And I say first because Peter did such an awesome job. It cannot be our last. Correct. Oh, absolutely not. No, it's going to be. I'm already a- planning like to have where we're going to put the next one. <laughs> We might have one made just to put in our living room. He did such a great job. Peter, I, I hope you're listening. I'm, we have, There's so many things that we want to go over with this this artwork. It's If you've listened to our show the last year, and, you, and we're going to post... First of all, we're going to post some great pictures up on mm-hmm. all the social medias. If you're listening to this... We do have some new social media platforms that I'm going to update the webpage, let everybody know. Uh, all your big ones, you know, um, you know, there's a few different ones. I can mention Spotify. We are on Spotify now. We're on a couple of other apps that I can't really mention because there's contractual stuff. And then obviously, you know, I can mention YouTube. We, everybody's on YouTube. So if you, uh, if you want to follow us and subscribe to us on YouTube, you get to see this fantastic beautiful artwork behind us you mm. guys it is absolutely amazing i am so proud of it it's <laughs> it's been a while since i've been this proud of anything uh peter really outdid himself on this one so listen so i'll tell you so it, anybody that's been a fan of the show and has listened to I, we've got 40 <laughs> plus episodes out there uh yes Th- this would be 49 yeah, 40 49 yeah right Yep. So this kind of encompasses us from the beginning to up to current times. Mm-hmm. So this guy is a local artist, Peter Welm. So if you're on Instagram, I'll tell you it's Gorilla Gorilla Art. Uh, you can follow him on Instagram. Mm-hmm. A local artist, and the guy is incredible. You can see his art in True Story Brewery. And you can see them all around town. Where's Tree Story Brewery? <clears throat> that is um, in Crestwood. Crestwood, okay. right? It's right there so it's behind in Post. Uh, uh, Jesus, what is that? Post uh, Office Pies. No, I was gonna say Post Office Pies. There's another uh, the gas uh, the station. The, the, station. Fil- oh, the filling, the filling station. station. We were we were there just the other day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yep. It, right there. It's a little nook that if you're not really sharp on looking yeah. for it they have a small banner it's like three feet wide hanging uh, from the for awning all you, for all you local guys and girls it's uh crestwood boulevard yeah okay. yeah so but he has a huge piece of art it's about 20 piece uh 20 feet there inside the wall but this is the biggest piece that he's done that's portable and mobile yeah so four very, foot by eight foot for yeah. everybody and the fact that the 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 way he captured the the essence of the show and all this and how how and I hope Miranda's listening to this too. Uh, I'm gonna point out to her. I hope she can see it in this video. You know, if everybody remembers the Ghost Hunter, um, the podcast that we did with Miranda, you know, I was I was wound up about the damn flashlights. That was my big thing, and it was just how how it worked and 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 the fact that it didn't have buttons on it. So because that was my I'm calling bullshit, you know, thing right. on, on this thing. And then mm. when she unloaded a damn bank bag of damn flashlights that didn't work that way, threw me way off. So it really got me wound up. And the fact that Peter just so happened, like it was meant to be, put it right over my shoulder. And the image is her holding the flashlight and the rays of light coming out has a ghost in it. Mm. And I couldn't have asked. I don't even know if I could have asked for that. <laughs> right. And it, and it just worked out so good. And the fact that she's looking towards me just makes it awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he absolutely, you know, and we talked about this earlier, the placement. I mean, it, it's just uncanny. Yeah. It's like he has been in here and, and sat through every podcast episode with us. He and, and to be fair, we didn't tell him where to put anything. No. Yeah, so he just... 
he organically made it happen. It was it was one of those it was meant to be kind of deals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. But let me tell you the fun part about this this sweet piece of artwork. It was getting this son of a bitch home. Mm. So oh, that was an adventure. It was an adventure. So we go. We're all excited, you know, um, like Christmas, so to speak. And, you know, me and Dave, and we go. We run over there and. We're just taking it back. We're talking to Peter about it and probably spent a little too much time standing around. But it was beautiful <laughs> sunshine over at Peter's place. And uh, so we loaded up and we're in we're in the truck and I dropped Dave off and Amber texts her. You text her? Uh, I texted both y'all. I was like, yeah. uh, I was, I was it's, like it's getting minute. dark and it's thundering. Yeah, like one minute from my house, yeah. you were going to drop me off. I yeah. was getting concerned. And so... And I'm heading toward, and I would have to head towards that. So I was like, oh, I think I can make it pretty good. And so I dropped Dave off, and so I head down the road. And it's a, it's a windy road. It's not a very fast road, but I get all the way. And I'm not kidding you. I'm probably less than five minutes from the house. So I pull up to this intersection. There's about three or four cars ahead of me. And the first big plop of dr- raindrop hit the windshield. And you would have thought the damn truck was on fire. I yanked that bitch. And everybody was stopped. It was red light. And there's a building that was off to the left. It was an old butcher shop. And it's empty now, but they have an overhanging awning out front. And so I just kind of half-assed look, stomped the gas. I mean, I mean, boiling tires, making noise. And I, sl- I power slid that bitch over there. <laughs> and I jumped out of the truck. Threw it apart, jumped out of that truck so fast. And ran. I've never unloaded anything in my life that fast and i can only imagine what everybody was thinking because it was a lot of traffic going both directions and they seemed like a yeah, wild that, that little shop sits really close to the road too yeah very so you close. were right there for everybody to look at oh yeah so they were probably like, what the hell is this guy's deal <laughs> slinging four by eight sheets of plywood around me. <laughs> right <laughs> and, and then i call the missus and let her know that i'm under the awning and now I'll let her take over. This is her aspect of this grand adventure. <laughs> well, my first thing was, I'll just come and we'll put it in the car. You know, I can lay the seats down and we'll get it in the car. And he's like, there's no fucking way that <laughs> right. this thing is fitting in your car. Yeah. Oh, hell no. And no. I'm like, well, what can I do? And he's like, you know, I've got that plastic wrap. Grab that. Grab, you know, the tarp. We'll We'll figure it out. All right, so I'm on a mission. I haul ass. I run downstairs. I grab everything. Load it up in the car. Throw the key in the ignition. Click, click. Right. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Pouring yeah. down right in. Dead battery. I was so upset. And I was on the phone with Chris, and I was trying to relay everything back to him. And then Dave's calling me. And I'm trying to stay calm. With Chris. Which you failed. <laughs> no, no, hold on, hold on. I, on the phone with Chris, I'm trying very hard to, you know, stay calm because I'm sure that he is just beside himself. He's very upset. You know, I'm not trying to add to that. And uh, so I'm like, I got to go. You know, Dave's calling me. And, and Dave, click over Dave. And Dave's like, hey, did he get it home? And I was like, Bleh! I yeah. just unleash all of this anxiety <laughs> onto him. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it stopped raining enough that uh, I was able to use my little jumper box, and I got my car jumped off, and we, um, I went out there with the tarp and the plastic, and we oohed and aw- the the awning. When I got there, the awning that he was under was bigger than I remember it being, so I felt good about that, and uh, we oohed and awed over it for a while, and wrapped that bitch up with plastic wrap, threw a tarp over it, and. Brought it home. Awesome. And, and it, to, but to be fair, you know, luckily it had slowed down on the rain. Mm-hmm. and, and the, It was drizzling still. And I had plenty of uh, shrink wrap. We tied it up pretty tight. And I was, she was trying to keep me calm. But to be fair, I was so relieved that I got it out of the truck and was underneath that awning that I was calm. Mm-hmm. Now, if it had gotten soaked, I'd have been mad as shit. Well, because when I talked to you, I talked to you first because Peter asked me. He goes, hey, man, y'all make it okay? And I go, I don't know, I guess. Let me talk to Chris. And you were calm as can be. And then when I call her, the fucking sky was falling, you know? And I'm like, Jesus, do you know something I don't know? So that's what was so. I was just 
I was upset that I was not able to come to his aid. I get it, but I knew he was safe and okay. So I guess that's why I was calm, because he was calm. Yeah. So Yeah. But but all in all, it turned out well, and it's a story behind the story, you know, yeah. is, is what it is. Yeah. Well, I'm just glad we got it home, got it safe. It's beautiful. We're all very proud of it. Uh, I can't wait. You know, to have Peter on the show, to have him in, talk to him, let him know I really how awesome he did. Yeah, I can't wait to get a couple of guests back in. Miranda, uh, the guys from the um, Engines of Destiny, let them look at that. I got to mm-hmm. tag those, those guys in there. Our Bigfoot guy. Our Bigfoot guy. Man, yeah. we got him. Front and center, baby. Got center, yeah. Yo. <laughs> well, the thing is, is each image is its own story. I yeah, mean, that's uh, yeah. what's incredible. I mean, you could talk for hours on every image on there. Mm-hmm. Because that's what we did, you know, originally. Right. Yeah. And so that's what makes it so incredible. And to encompass 49 episodes into a single piece is pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. And, and and it's I'm glad you mentioned that because I think you and I were discussing that. To be able, you know, to take your own story and to put it on something is amazing enough. But to take somebody else's yeah. that they relay to you and and to do such a great job you know there's no way he listened to every episode in depth because we hopefully made a fan out of him by doing this piece and he's going to go back and listen to some of these things but in the time frame they had to do it there's no way he would have had to sat and listen for over a week constantly just to it'd been a full-time job but for him to hit the highlights and 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 to be able to channel what he channeled is uncanny. Well, so I know he didn't do that, but I t- I think that we told him enough. I talked about glory holes and all kinds of crazy. <laughs> well, things. I even told you know uh, Chris. I was looking at this picture <laughs> of my little buddy Dave back here standing <laughs> on a bench with his head through a drop ceiling, and he's wearing. Like a shirt with a, a button-up shirt that's open. I, I said, that that even looks like something that he would wear. So here's what happened with that is as I sent him a photo of myself at a comedy show. So right after I opened for that guy for Chris Tucker, I had that picture of me, Chris, and and, and another guy. And I forwarded that to him. So he used that as his model. Okay. So that's... that's awesome. Yeah, it's funny you would notice that, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was like, that that totally <laughs> looks like something he would wear. <laughs> like, a, I, there's no doubt that that's Dave. Right. But to the average person who sees that, they wouldn't know. You would have to be a fan of the, the show yeah, yeah. to right. get the joke on that. And that's what makes it so funny. Oh, you yeah. Know? But, man, he did he Yeah, did Peter awesome. outdid himself. He, Birmingham local artist, Peter Wilm. Yeah. Definitely. Very, very proud. And Thank our, you. And our, our buddies over here at Ghost Train, let's not leave them out. The right. Yeah, that was great. So That's very cool. So we got an old school steam locomotive and then got the smoke coming out of the front, which is a ghost. Yeah. really ties it together. I think those guys will love that when they see it. Yep. Um, but there's some there's some personal touches. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> we have a, a roguey dog. Right. We have a little Dexter. A Dexter doggy. Yep, my buddy. And my personal favorites. <laughs> of course. Baby, I got not one, but two possums. Right. <laughs> and their little pink noses are the only thing of color <laughs> anywhere on this 8x4 right. artwork. Yeah. Yep. And that just... And I would like to thank Peter for that because now no, she owns no. two possums, and so we've got that covered. <laughs> no, I'm gonna, I'm still gonna have a live possum yeah. one day. The day will come. So I will say this: probably the tw- trickiest part of the whole thing he told me was the girl down here in the corner with the five fingers, mm-hmm. because he we didn't have a picture, obviously, right? And so for me to tell the story and to him to create an image. And to put it on canvas was pretty incredible. So he actually brought that to life for the first oh, yeah. time right there. So yeah, that's ni- nice job on that one, Peter, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Peter did we really cannot thank you enough. And I, I, if I may point out one more thing. 
So the story of the girl, the the legendary McDonald's girl, yeah. that you know, I met at McDonald's, and then she passed my number in the jail cell one after another. Yes. Now, if any ladies would like to call, our number is right here. So feel free to call. <laughs> Absolutely. And that is the number to the studio that is broadcast at all times now. That's right. I, I want that on a shirt. That's, yeah, that's that yeah. <laughs> Peter, if you're listening, I want the uh, prison pay phone design on a on a shirt on a shirt yeah, yeah we gotta, That's one we gotta of my figure favorites. out how to get out well, a few of the i'll be honest with you a lot of these would make great shirts oh, oh yeah. absolutely each one yeah he did the, a great job the steampunk monkey over there would yes. be a fantastic thing so it's just so much so creative and uh and it, it, i don't know just we can sit and talk about it all day but what there, there's something that we haven't talked about yet it's on the artwork and it relates to another story, but it's going to segue into another story that we're going to talk about tonight. But the the Lucha, Lucha Libre mask, the wrestling mask, you know, t- had the wrestlers on, and, and he had the, and, you know, the old school right. uh, wrestling mask, mask like that. Reminds me of the guy that was walking around at the Erotic Art Festival with the full on mask and his leather straps on and his old cock sock. Yeah. That dude as soon as that I was saw awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as I saw him walking around, I thought about the Lucha Libres. So I'm glad you brought that up because that erotic show, like I told you in the beginning, I was anticipating it to be a fi- on a scale of one to ten you know, a five or a six, and I think we were kind of on the same page. Mm-hmm. It wasn't going to be, there's no way, it, it, yeah. it wasn't going to be running trains and all of that. Yeah. But it was still pretty good. It was fun. It was entertaining. And there was some unusual stuff you don't see, you know. Well, I'm going to tell you, and I don't know who she is, but old Miss Ivy <laughs> or at Eve or whatever you want to classify her. The girl with the collar on? The, no, the girl that no, was wearing she, the two leaves. She had the leaves, leaves oh, yeah. over. Oh, Lee smokes, man. Her, she, she alternated. She had a yellow sundress on yeah. that she would put on sometimes. But yeah. then she would take the dress off, and she still had the red heels on. Yeah. And it was just like little leaves over. Oh, I saw the that. Oh, yeah. Bare essentials. And went, bare, bare essentials. She was She strong. was rocking it. And she let me tell you, she make son. you sit up and pay attention, boy, because yeah. I saw that too. Yeah, yeah. And once in a while, she'd put that dress on whenever the heat got too strong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When she started, when she started smelling those pheromones a little bit too heavy, yeah. and, and the crowd started creeping in on her, I noticed she'd put yeah. that dress back on. The dress on, overcoat, hoodie, glasses, <laughs> all that. She didn't go that deep, but it she was knew funny, she but. was bad, boy. Yeah. And then there was another one. With that old latex mini skirt and a collar on, walking around with a corset. Yeah. So she was. She would walk around and not speak a word, and she had no direction. All she did was walk around, cock strong, arrogant. Uh, I felt like she was. She might have been shopping a little bit for you know her guy was right behind her, and that's what I was gonna say. She had a guy with her, and that's yeah. what was unusual. But, but now it's not the one that had the yellow boots on. I don't remember if she had uh, the yellow uh, boots. I thought her guy was the older guy with a shaved head. Yeah, and he in had, the suit. No, he had a he had more like a um, uh, a button up type shirt, but almost like yeah. a, uh, a buckle, something that would you'd buy in buckle. Yeah, but uh, I must be thinking of somebody else. But there believe was another, me, we didn't miss a detail. Oh yeah, but, <laughs> but she looked she, like, she looked like she was searching for that third party. Yeah, and I'm gonna tell you what, all she had to do was raise the sign, and everybody in there would have lined up. Oh she yeah, was, because she was, she was strong, boy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's why I felt like that's what she was doing because she was levels above a lot of the other girls that were in there, and just the way she was walking around like she was on. Like she was, you know. But her confidence and all that was sexy. She oozed it. I mean, I was like, tone that shit down, baby, because we can't hold it in this auditorium. That sexiness. God damn, she was bringing it. But how do you, I mean, you got to think about how hard it is to contain that in an environment like that. Or you're, everything's already sexed up. I mean, there was a lot of people that's walking around next to nothing on. Some shouldn't have been. But. 
Um, and then you have a chick like that that walks through, and you and you wonder what what goes through her mind. If you said something a touch off color, that would be a touch off color in normal settings. Would it not be touch off color there? I mean, was she expecting nobody to say anything to her or look at her the way she was parading around? You know, and that's what's interesting because I'll be honest with you, there was a lot of women that was probably wearing less clothes than they very needed to be. Needed to be. Well said. And so she owned, and, and, and this was an auditorium. I mean, it was a large room and she owned it when she walked around. So. And she wasn't, she wasn't lacking clothes. She was. She was fairly well dressed. Oh, she was well dressed. Yeah. But boy, she was she brought the sex appeal, I mean, and then some. Yeah. And it was it was fifty shades of gray all, all over. Yeah. But it was I'm talking about I rip your hair out by the roots and throw <laughs> you down. I mean, she was sexy as shit. And she was looking for it. And it was, who's going to step up? Who has the balls to take me by the throat and and, and own this? Yeah. And that's what she was looking for. But what was awkward. But she had a man there with her. Yeah. She did. But and that's was, what was really But he was always odd. two steps behind her. He was he was literally walked right behind her, about a step and a half, two steps behind her. Right. And they never walked side by side. They were only standing side by side unless she had stopped and was looking at something. She would come back and kind of check in from time to time. Yeah. You know, and it, it was interesting. And it was, do I break that threshold and do I... Do I start a potential argument slash fight? Do I what? Where where is the boundary at? You know, and that's that's the interesting point. Do you think that was his thing, where he was just wanting to kind of be that step or so back to 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 see over her shoulder the reactions of people's faces as she as she strolled through there? Well, I mean, the thing is, we don't know if. We don't know their situation. Maybe it was just a friend that was there to kind of make sure that she was safe. It could have been maybe she wasn't looking for another man, but maybe another woman. We don't know. Well, that's what I'm saying. Oh, that's what I'm saying. And that's the mystery of the whole thing. Yeah. But, so I'll say this. So that girl that I was with several years ago, I mean, she would dress up sexy. And, and I'll be honest with you, nothing turned me on more than to go out in public and to see her dressed up and to know that other guys were losing their mind. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm talking about titties pushed up, thigh high stockings, short skirts, heels, and the whole bit. Yeah. And her walk through a room and nav- navigate a group of guys. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's his, when I was saying he's a step or two back watching. Right. Watching watching the, the wave split, so to speak. The Red Sea split. Yeah. Open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And but that was our thing, and then we would go home, and we would have wild name calling, hair pulling, spitting sex. I yeah. mean, it would be it would be incredible. Yeah. So I don't know really. That was <laughs> what they, that was. My, that's dealing. not. I am not judging. You just reminded me of a story. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, but and so when I see that, that's what I think of is. Everybody has their own little fetish, you know, as yeah. what turns them on. But uh, yeah. that that's what I envision was going on between them two. Mm-hmm. So, but it was wild, man. But that the next thing I touch on was, and I don't even know the chick's name. I think you got her information. And it was the first time I've ever seen it up close was the girl that was tied up and suspended from yeah. the air. Yeah, yeah. That was pretty. That was pretty amazing. That was cool. So I went to a party in uh, Portland, Oregon, where for some reason tying chicks up and hanging them from the roof is a big, is fairly common over there. Really? Yeah, and you wouldn't guess that. And I'll tell you another little uh, nugget of information: per square mile, there are more strip clubs in Portland, Oregon, than anywhere else, which a lot of people don't know that. Really. Yes. That seems odd. It, it It is odd, but so I went up there for work, and it's not uncommon to have a subdivision and in a house be a, a strip club. Yeah. What? Yeah, oh, oh, no, I'm telling you. And when I tell you a strip club, I'm telling, I'm talking about tatted up, and it's full nude up there. Mm-hmm. 
tatting up, liquor going, and it's just a full blown. I mean, go throwing down. So over a there. neighborhood, and one of the houses in the neighborhood is a strip club. Yeah, they'll remodel it and make it a strip club, and it is. I'm I'm telling you. Google it if you don't believe me. That's amazing. Per square mile, there are more strip clubs in Portland than anywhere. They are everywhere. They litter the town, which if you're going to litter a town with anything... That's what you should be littering with. Baby, <laughs> what you say? <laughs> yes. And I'm talking very, very good looking. I'm not... It is not scourge of the earth rocking women so in, in there. So I'm guessing Hooters and stuff doesn't do very well up there. Well, I'll tell you what, those girls in there, they wouldn't even consider Hooters. Yeah. It is, they are top-notch, smoking hot women up dancing in those mom-and-pop, uh, mom's garage Mom type. garage. <laughs> yeah. I mean, killing it, killing it up there. And they'll be packed everywhere. And it's very common. And I guess that's why they're so very sexually liberated up there. Which down here in the southeast, you know, a lot of people may not know that, mm -hmm. but it's very calm and it's very comfortable. It's very ho hum up there. Just a matter of fact. It it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And if you say, "Hey, I'm gonna go to a strip club," that's you might as well be saying, "Hey, I'm going to church," yeah. because they're both probably right next to each other. To be <laughs> honest with you, probably so. It's just it's a wild scene coming from where we come from. It blew me away to see that and experience it. But um, I I met some amazing, incredible people up there. Yeah. And so if you have a chance, go to Portland. Go to Portland. And with a pocket full of wants. Right. Okay. <laughs> but to go back to that girl being sus tied up and suspended, you know, the guy was so methodical about it. Uh, and And the look on her face... <clears throat> Dude, she was into that. I mean, mm. and it looked very uncomfortable, you know, but I'm sure the guy had, he had all her weight balance and he would let a portion down, lift another portion up. And, and I have not seen a girl have that much passion in her face just in the middle of a room like that in a long time. I mean, she was into what was going on. Yeah. And. It's a very sexual thing for a lot of them, I'll, I'll tell you, because I saw that. I was at a an S&M party. I, I Imagine that. get into how I got into it. Yeah. But it was a room full of people, and it was a, it's a very sexual thing for a lot of those women, and they get off on that whole dominant, submissive, being tied up, restraint thing. Yeah. So well, it, was, it was impressive. I mean, the fact that he could manipulate her like that i mean he literally he had her you know horizontal inverted he flip her over and it was just man that's i made the joke i said that's the guy you want to take camping with you i mean this mm. motherfucker was tying knots like a champion yeah <laughs> that old half hitch ain't nothing but i can <laughs> i had a little bit of a different take on it um <clears throat> uh I honestly kind of took him to be the star of the show. Oh, I agree with that. I wasn't taking I wasn't taking anything away from him. Well, <laughs> I viewed her to be uh, very relaxed, very obviously very trustworthy or trust trusting yeah. in this man. So that wasn't the first time they worked together. I don't know that. I wouldn't say so. Um, well, so. the way they were kissing on each other at the in one portion of that, I wouldn't think it was. But well, that's what I'm saying. They one time. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. They knew each other. There was a re relationship there. Yeah. We don't know that. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> she says, we don't know that. We, we don't. I honestly thought, you know, like maybe this was his display that he set up and he brought his assistant, whatever, like maybe... Not necessarily thinking that they were lovers or otherwise invested in each other, but maybe they, I mean, I don't know how big the sex erotic shows are. Maybe that's something that they... Travel and do together? Yeah. Hell, I didn't know. And so, but I, I knew, which I don't know if you call it roping. I don't know what you call it. It's not something that I've ever personally been interested in, um, but... To, to stand there and to watch it, you know, to really give it a chance, it 
was really fucking hot. And so as soon as they were done, I ran up and I was, you know, was like, hey, would you guys come on our podcast? You know. Really? And the guy's like, well, I'm from Atlanta, so you would have to ask her. And she's from? She, it's my understanding that she's in the Birmingham area. And, um. So. So, yeah, I mean, he turned, yeah. he turned around and asked her. He was like, you know, she wants to know if, if you'd be interested in doing a podcast about, you know roping or whatever the fuck it's called and she gave a very positive response i've reached out to her i've not heard anything but huh to say i mean i don't we can't say i know that he lives in atlanta she seems to be local so i can't say if they're intimate or if they're just friends or know each other through um so they may just be old roping buddies. Well, I mean, it could just be, you know, if I, if if the two of you have interest in something, you know, it could just be a common interest, and in, and in even the kiss could have just been part of the show. Right. We don't know, you know. Well, I don't think she wandered the streets with a pile of rope waiting for someone to tie her <laughs> up. I mean, no. surely, you know. But, Which I follow that guy on Instagram too, and, and oh really? Yeah, uh, he she was all in, man. Yes. Damn. I'm gonna be buying a loop here before long and hang that bitch right here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get some rope. I have to, I have to send an old direct message to the guy and say what kind of rope brand do you prefer? Yeah, does that old uh, double half hitch go over or under oh, right here? <laughs> you got a little loop around. <laughs> I got. I got you. a book of knots. Yeah. <laughs> They'll, they'll slip knot, they'll half hitch. Yeah. So, no, I'm with you because I'll be honest with you. There was a time in my life where I, I wasn't into all that, but it, it ties into that whole latex and all that stuff. And I went to latex parties and I did all that. And there was a time, and that's a whole other world, you know, that you get into. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I ever went to a latex party, I'd feel like, what's his name, Ross off of Friends and say... When when he's wearing the latex, the leather oh, pants, pants. And, oh. and and he called Can't Joe, walk. he couldn't get them off, he couldn't get, <laughs> and Joey's like, pour lotion down it, and oh. he pours lotion. Down. He's changing. he's like, oh, it's just making a mess. He goes, oh, I'm sorry, I meant baby powder, so he poured baby powder. It's a baby oh, powder and lotion God. made just a like cake mix. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but um, there, it's a wild scene. For people that are outside of that world, you know, and I know that there's a scene here locally that that's heavily into that. And I don't know if you saw it or not, but there was a girl there with a rubber mask on with that that kitty, kitty cat. cat. Yeah. Oh boy. And I'm gonna tell you, she almost churned up some dark <laughs> <laughs> dark memories of mine. I, I I had a female friend with me, so I was trying to keep everything in check. Yeah. And she don't know my dark side. Yeah. So she didn't uh, see. <laughs> no. So I try to act like I didn't. That yeah. that whole thing disgusted me. But boy, let me tell you. <laughs> You act like it disgusted you. Yeah. Really like, oh, I can't believe anybody does that. Excuse me, I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, thankfully, there was no nuns in the room because it would have oh, been game. Oh, it would have been back. over. Game Done. over. A leather, Done. little leather <laughs> mini skirt, nun. Oh, my God. Fuck it. There was no hiding that. Everybody yeah. knows that's Everybody. my thing. <laughs> but I will say this, and I don't know if I told you all this story or not, but... So her and I separated, and I went to the restroom, and <laughs> so the restrooms are fairly expansive because, I mean, it's a it's an auditorium, right? And you got to yeah. accommodate a thousand people or whatever it is. So I go into the restroom, and there's a handicap stall on the right, and the door's closed, so I'm standing over to the left, and I'm peeing, and this kid comes out, and all he's wearing is a jock strap and nothing else, mm-hmm. just a jock strap. And he runs to the restroom. I mean, he runs to the sink, and he spits a mouthful of, I don't know what, no. out. And then this other kid comes out after him. Oh, oh. yeah. And uh, they had, you know, in the handicap stall, they had the rail right there, and then they had this huge wooden paddle in there. So I mean, there was some real shit going on <laughs> in there. <laughs> Which, ironically, I won't, I, there's no way I will post it, 
But somehow that paddle found its way outside the venue when we were leaving, and I took pictures of me and that girl paddling each other <laughs> with that paddle. You <laughs> don't that know where that paddle. paddle's been. You don't know. <laughs> it didn't touch human. Sk- it did, it touched our hands, but it didn't touch any skin. She right. kept her pants on, right. but it was funny because I'll tell you, the end of it was chipped, so it had actually had seen battle. Yeah. Battle scars. <laughs> so seen battle. Oh, it was it was wild. But that's wild. I didn't see anything like that. Go, which I don't know if yeah. I can't remember if I went to the bathroom, but uh, <clears throat> but I didn't see anything crazy going on like that. But I did see. I saw some things, and I'm. I should, probably shouldn't mention it as a little. Amber will probably shame me for it, but we walked in. We weren't there long, and you know Amber had her arm in mine. And there was this one chick, and she she walked up. I got so excited, my arm. I started yanking my arm like, "Did you see that? You see it?" And she goes, "What did you say? Control your face or something like that?" Mm-hmm. What was it? She was just. It was a it was a larger woman, basically just wearing electrical tape over the bare essentials. And but and that's what you had there. You had the freedom to be yourself. Yes. Right. I well. I was impressed because so many people are recessive, as if that's the right thing to say, about themselves. Mm. And we all have our, we all are our worst critic. You know what I'm saying? But this chick, she was a larger gal. The thing that excited me, I, just because I don't know why, I really don't, but she had a, a collar and a leash around the neck of a dude. Was it the same muchacho Mask, no, motherfucker? Uh, it might have been. I can't remember. The guy had a collar with a leash on it? Yeah, the yeah, guy yeah. wearing the old gimp mask. And she was, was holding it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I missed that. Yeah. Yeah. But he was walking around on his own a lot, too. Oh, but, looking for someone to hold that collar? Yeah. But, uh, whew, man, she was... It, it was good people watching. It was. For sure. And uh, So, and I think, you know, we kind of... Rec- uh, went over this uh, before the show that there wasn't really a dress code, but you know you couldn't be completely naked. You had to have pasties or whatever. Right. So they they had a uh, little body paint station where you could walk in and you know you could undress. <laughs> Shut up! You could walk in and you know undress, take your top I, off or whatever, get your you know breast painted or right whatever it was a body painting station for that purpose well i had a little buddy there that decided um <clears throat> i don't know maybe he's eight and at a carnival <laughs> 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 what? This, this motherfucker his gets his face painted i saw like that guy the yeah. ultimate warrior <laughs> yeah i saw that that's one of your people that's one of my people <laughs> I mean, I have I, dragged I, his ass so much over that. I made so much fun of him. And I even, because, you know, they had the little photo booth station with the little, you know, backdrop. Yeah. And I, I was like, Chris, you got to take my picture with him because I'm going to make so much fun of him. But the thing is, that's some fucking shit I would do, too. Like, I, I would do that. But what's funny about it is the guy is very smart, right? But he's innocent in a weird way as well like i'm not saying he's innocent he's never done anything or whatever i mean he's a grown man he's probably got some great stories but it's just the fact that he just walked in there and decided to get his face painted <laughs> like he's like she said an eight-year-old at a carnival look like the he like the ultimate warrior <laughs> so. i'm surprised they i'm i hope they charged him triple you know what i'm saying because they probably did it for free <laughs> so ridiculous yeah but so here's what happened. So I, oh, and, I, I noticed. In a Batman shirt, too. Oh, yeah. Add. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I noticed that he was continuously talking with you, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I pull Chris to the side. I go, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> and she, he goes, that's one of Amber's buddies from the bar. And I go, I figured because nobody that you run would do that shit. <laughs> So that's what made it so funny. That's a great compliment for me. A little bit of slight on her, but yeah. you know. No, but that was true. Yeah. But here's hey, the deal. I collect the weirdos. I'm okay with that. But here's the bottom line is, is in that situation, you're free to be who you are sexually, you know? And right. that's the great thing about that environment. 
be who you are. Everybody accepts everybody. If you want to be Batman, if you want to whatever it is, right. then, then that's it. Would and it's you, supposed to be a no-judgment zone. Would you Would you have giggled if you'd have walked around in the corner and I was walking around in some old you know, boxer briefs just strutting around? You would have never heard the end of it, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I threatened. I got. I got some nice. I got some. I got some nice boxer briefs. Some Adidas ones. You know, makes my package look really nice. I'm. And, I'm sure and, it does. As, as I'm strutting around, and I told Amber, I said, I said, and I had them on. I said, I'm gonna check this place out. So he's going. I said, I might pull my clothes off. I said, Will you hold my clothes? She said she would. And I yeah. didn't get the balls to do it, but I started to. So I'll tell you. So in addition to the body painting, over on the opposite side. There was a photo booth there. I don't know if you I caught saw it. it, but I didn't. So let me tell you. So I saw two girls go in. I saw a guy and a girl go in. And I saw this creepy guy, older guy with a beard and a camera. Yeah. And then they pull a curtain and you go back there. And so I asked the girl I was with, I go, I go, what is that? What goes on back there? She goes, that's where you can go and you can get your dick sucked and someone will take a picture of it. <laughs> no. <Nuh-uh. laughs> Swear to God. I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just telling you that... Now, you're saying that you can bring somebody in there with you or somebody already in there? Oh, it was way. all couples that was going back. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It says, you bring, it's a B, bring, bring your own girl, right? B-Y-O-D. Yeah, bring that. your own dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it was... Um, nobody seemed to see any negatives or any photos that came out right. of there. But you got to understand, that guy's got a hard a hard copy somewhere. I mean, oh, yeah. Got, yeah. His server probably was pretty wild. Yeah, yeah. So, it, I mean, so anyways, it was a fun show. The yeah. Erotic Art Show of 2019. I would call it a success. I would, too. I would, I would say... I would say there was a couple of things I expected to, uh, I kind of expected to see, but I didn't see. And then there was some weird things I saw that I didn't expect to see, like the CBD oil thing. I'm kind of on the fence about. It makes sense, but CBD oil stuff now is so is becoming so mainstream. I was kind of surprised that it was there now that we have sto- stores where it's, if if it wasn't as mainstream, I could I would have it would have made more sense. But I mean, it's so a I bought. I bought a whole bottle of that. How's that working out for you? I haven't even broke the seal Are on you it. shitting me? I'm not. And, and to be honest with you, I should have. After the week I've had, <laughs> I've gotten my dick kicked in for five days in a row, so I should have broken a seal on it. Yeah. Now, with, but, now I know they make different ones for different things. and uh, I told them anxiety is what okay. I needed, ironically, and I super needed it. And you didn't take it? No, I was coming home after getting my ass kicked all night at work and was just showering. I thought you were supposed to take it before. You... Before you get your ass kicked? I didn't know you could pre, pre, <laughs> pre-meditate an yeah, ass kicking. Like, well, that's <laughs> Generally, you get your ass kicked. You're well, like, you're... Jesus, I didn't expect that. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a pre-game. I mean, you knew you were having a rough week. Little... No, if I know I'm going to get my ass kicked, I usually avoid the situation. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. No, it's supposed to just kind of calm you down, which... If this coming week is anything like last week, I'll start taking them on Monday morning, you know, yeah. because fuck me. That was a tough one last week. Yeah. But was I don't it just because the holiday or what? It was just everything. Short staff, holiday, inventory, everything. It was just compounded. If it you makes know? you feel better, we've had the same at work, too. Not to that degree, but but you can tell things were escalated a little bit. And I, I just think holidays fuck shit up, man. It just it, does. It does. But because I guess I'm not in... I'm a very, I don't take anything. I'll take an aspirin and that's it. And I'm not, or I'll, I'll have a, a drink. But CBD and all that is so far outside of my norm mm-hmm. that I guess when I get home, it just never enters my mind. You haven't made a condition response out of it. Absolutely not. And yeah. it's sitting full bottle in a medicine cabinet. Well, that's, my, your, that's your first problem. You can't, until that's a, a second nature thing, you can't put that away. you got to put it. Bam! Right there, out in the open. You got you got to leave that bitch. Probably need to put it on my pillow. Well, I don't know about the pillow, but (laughs) like in your kitchen, right next to the sink. Yeah. You know, or right next to the refrigerator. If you typically go in the refrigerator in the morning before you get ready to go do something, it's bam! It's right there, looking at you. No, you're right. You're right. Because to be honest with you, since I bought it, I mean, literally, the safety seal is still on that thing. Mm -hmm. So. I might go ahead and just pop one tonight when I get home, Bam! Just, just to give that thing a little run around the block. Well, I would, I would like to know somebody that's damn that's that's got it or using it cause to have a um, 
to have a true um somebody i trust to give me a true feeling on it you know what i'm saying yeah. because a sales a legitimate gonna, review yeah legitimate review there you go so these are cbd gummies right and she gave me a half and she says we recommend you start with a half because i'm i'm pure meaning i don't, I don't smoke weed i don't do anything mm-hmm. and uh i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna that's go the only thing you're pure on <laughs> that's right you're right <laughs> I'm just going to go in straight bareback, and I'll just take a full one to my first time. I don't think it's going to have that much of an effect. I'll be, I'll be surprised <laughs> if it does. Six hours six hours later, <laughs> and, and I hear the phone ring and answer, and he's like, Hey, man. Yeah. I'll be- <laughs> I'm still on the ground. Can you come get me? I, I, I don't even know if the door's unlocked. Just kick that bitch in. <laughs> I would be very surprised. <laughs> no, I'll say that because I listened. There's there's some other podcasts I listen to, some very popular podcasts that, and this. But one, it don't have THC. In I it, understand. So I understand. But it's just so funny to hear the guys, um, the ones that do, and they and they they talk about the gummies, and it's like, and I think we even mentioned this before. It was like, yeah, you're only supposed to take like. A quarter of it, and I'm thinking, why the fuck not sell it that size? Make them mini bears, you know? Yeah. What I'm saying? Why you're gonna trust some motherfucker to break that off in a quarter? And uh, and so this one guy was eating it, and this other guy was watching. He goes, "How much is that?" And he told him, and it was like microns or whatever they measure it in. And the other guy goes, "Yeah, that usually puts somebody in a fucking coma." He's done ate three of them bitches. And you're supposed Ooh. to take. You're supposed to, and he's over. He's over <laughs> popping them like Tic Tacs, and they're like. How many are you supposed to take? And he's like, a half every six hours. And he just ate three and just sees it in their talk. And you can just see his eyes starting to cross, you know. And, he go, and the guy goes, fuck it, I'm good. I can drive after this. And we're like, what? So we all went. So I had a family member that lived in Colorado. And we went up to Red Rocks. And we had a friend of ours here that went up. And we all went up to go see a concert. And uh, the guy next to us had a big old thing of weed brownies. Mm-hmm. And so he ate. The guy next to us gave us a brownie. You know, it was like four by four. <laughs> and so my buddy ate the whole thing. It was supposed to be for all y'all. It was supposed to be for the whole group. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And and he goes, he goes, he goes, that brownie ain't shit. <laughs> and then he took a hit of this dude's joint. And it's like like on Scooby Doo where he took a hit and you see the ash and it just smokes the whole thing down. So after it, it was like forty minutes, he goes, he goes, I don't feel nothing, I don't feel nothing, and he went from I don't feel nothing to I gotta go to the hospital. <laughs> so it was like that, you know, and slapped him in the face. So that night we went back home, and when we wake up at like nine ten o'clock in the morning. He was on the back patio, naked, face down on the concrete, <laughs> sleep. <laughs> That's what. I mean. No pillow, no sheet, no nothing, butt naked, face down on the concrete, like dead ass asleep. Like, like I just like this coldness. This coldness is great. Well, the funniest thing I ever see people do is if, if somebody's tripping on acid and another person's not, and they'll walk around behind them, right off their peripheral, and and flick a lighter. And it, it fucks with them because that I guess that light's intensified. Oh and so, really? Yeah. So so the person's walking around and you just creep up behind them and you just you know just take your little big lighter and flick it, flick it, flick it. You know, make a little spark. Uh-huh. And they start looking around like the fucking world's going crazy. Oh, see, I didn't, I didn't know that. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know acid tricks. Yeah, acid tricks. <laughs> you start fucking oh. with people. Chris has stories. He just won't tell. I got some stories. So oh. let me ask you this. So I was at. Today, before I came here, you know, I always do a quick beer run and brewery check. I got to make sure everybody is brewing beer and everything's Make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah, (laughs) checking with all my people. So I stopped by, and and of course, I had the dog with me. And I was waiting outside the restroom. Uh, There was a guy in the bathroom. And the bartender goes, she goes, Dave, do you need anything? I said, no, I'm just waiting on the bathroom. And she goes, well, go into the women's restroom. She goes, it's open. She goes, it's 2019. She goes, what's your problem? Go in there and do what you got to do. And it was just, I don't know why, it just threw me off a little bit. Well, you just were, you you were. Uh... I guess it's our, I don't know. Now, she was a younger girl. She mm-hmm. was 25 or so. You were identifying as a woman for a moment. Well, no, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> that was just the available bathroom. But I guess my question is. 
I know women, it's not uncommon for women to go to men's, but have you ever done that? Have I ever gone to a woman's bathroom? Not that I can remember. Now, hold on. You're talking about a single stall bathroom, correct? Right. Right. Now, in this situation, like it was a there's single There's one door. You open the door. There's one sink, one toilet. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, that's... That's not a big deal. So no. you don't worry about blocking another woman or, or anything like that? If I've you... got... Well, here's the... It wasn't an emergency. Well, I was I'm waiting. Well, that's what I'm saying. If, if it was an emergency, look, lady, I have to, I'll knock you out of the way. You come in here and sit with me. No, I get it. But this was not an emergency. I was sitting at the bar waiting for the bathroom to open you know right yeah. i i it it's just, not it just a big depends. deal yeah it's not that it's not big a big deal, deal really nah. well as long as you didn't want a jackass and piss all over the seat before you left as a well i'll tell you this i made sure and wiped the seat off because i didn't want them not you didn't that, want you didn't want to be the one coming out and then even if you didn't say so you just walked in to wash your hands right then you come out and the fuck somebody's yeah. gonna destroy the toilet and then that now they're all looking at you like you're this piece of shit yeah so so, but I'll tell you this. So, and I and I hate to. I know it seems like I always go back to Texas, but I was at a strip club in Texas, <laughs> and I was in, and it was six stalls and three urinals, and the strippers there, when when the women's restroom would be full, they would come in there and use the bathroom and go straight to the stall, and it was no big deal, and it was common. So I remember furnaces like that. Oh, let me tell you. This place was, it was, it's almost like that was their first go-to this, for the dancers. They yeah. wouldn't even bother to go to the women's. And so I was in there one time. I pissed. I was washing my hands. The stripper comes in, goes in, and blows the toilet clean up. <laughs> I'm talking about blowing it up. Yeah, if you're going to do that, that's and, where to do it. And then, but here's the deal. And then she left, and you think you're going to get a $25 lap dance out of me? Uh, <laughs> Ain't no chance, Coming baby. in hot, baby. Coming in hot. <laughs> Your stock went from 25 to maybe five. 50 cents. <laughs> a you dollar. didn't even give her a five. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh-uh. Because I, I didn't know the stock market rose and, and dropped. Oh, with, fast, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but boy, it does. because Was she a was, good-looking girl or just average? She was good-looking. Well, and, we, all, we all have Yeah, bottles. girls take shits. Oh, no. we know. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we know, Amber. <laughs> believe me. <laughs> but the thing is, to do it in a manner in which we hear it, and it was like, if I closed my eyes, I swear to you, I would have thought I was at a truck stop. Because <laughs> it wasn't, let me let a little out, and then I'll stop, and I'll be like, eee. <laughs> and then I let a little. No, no, no. That bitch was going well, for she, it. She was she's on, on the, a time schedule, yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, she's on the clock. Baby. And I guess she had what two minutes between songs. She Damn right. Yeah. She might have been next. No on, time to wait. She, she might have been next on Main. You don't know that. That's what was so wild to me. <laughs> and I mean, she was just murdering that toilet. <laughs> and I was like, fuck. And then. <laughs> For her to go around and ask for lap dances, I'm like, get the fuck away from me, dude. No way. Uh-uh. Well, you least know she's fresh wiped. <laughs> I want the vision that you just blow out purified steamed air. Little poofs. Yes. This smells I, like baby powder. Yes. Yeah. Maybe lavender. <laughs> fuck all that. Fucking macaroni. Oh. Uh-uh. It's like, Hell Jesus, no. I don't remember eating that steak. <laughs> no, no. So she wrecked the fantasy. So, ladies, listen. It's, the, it's all about the fantasy, really. It really it is. Uh, you know, and I think Amber and I have had this conversation before, too, is, is that guys are so fucking easy. If you just sell a good story and you just fantasize it up a little bit, we're, I mean, you... Like so just, easy. Yeah, we're so easy. Yeah. Yeah. If Amber said, uh, up until a few months ago, because, you know, then she wrecked it a couple months ago. Look, but let's, up just, to that let, let's, let, let's do this. You know what? Let's do it. Everybody takes a poop. I'm sorry. So... Here we go. Good. I'm glad. Do it. Let's fucking get it over with. All right. Go. Christopher. I'm totally blaming Chris on this because what the fuck did I do? Chris is so um, 
and and he's relaxed a lot now but especially when we first started doing the podcast he was you know put the dogs in the kennel get them on the other side of the house turn off all the fans turn off this turn off you know shut the windows lock the doors there can't be any sound if there's any sound it's gonna pick it up you can't you can't do that no sound no background noise I get, how do i so get my balls kicked ball. around my show yeah so <laughs> we've fault. we've made it this far we've we've got a, a a fan on we've got the door open there's a candle there's background noise not but, much not much but you you've eased up mm-hmm. so i've got my things all adjusted too so I've, I'm yeah i'm good at it so the three hour episode that we did with Miranda. Maybe it's Miranda's fault. I, <laughs> I found myself in a situation. I had to poopy. Oh. And so <laughs> poopy. I quietly excused myself from the table. I went to the bathroom. I poopied. However, I did not feel comfortable <laughs> flushing the fucking toilet because I didn't want there to be background noise. I didn't want there to be a recording of a toilet flushing on the podcast. So I left that bad boy to marinate. So that's fair up to this point. Yeah. And then what happened? Well, I mean, I was watching the door, and but all of a sudden the podcast just abruptly ended, I felt like. And I was watching Miranda trying to make sure that she wasn't going to get up. It, it did. Was, it, no, did no, Dave, it, did, it did not. It did, and we Dave. Were, it darts out it. of the fucking room, and before I realize where he's going, he's already in the fucking bathroom. Uh-huh. And uh, no, we were no, we were still recording. Yeah, no, we, it's all on film. Yeah, yeah, because oh, yeah, we were fucking <laughs> laughing, trying to hold our laughter. And yeah, Dave darts out of the fucking room to go to the bathroom again. It was a three-hour podcast, and Dave inevitably lifts up the. Uh, toilet lid to see a four foot snake in there and <laughs> four foot would be accurate <laughs> <laughs> that baby was coiled <laughs> oh, blunt on one side and tapered, tapered on the, on the other, other. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you you yowza congratulations <laughs> well, I, well from my view uh, on this and i is so i'm sitting there and i'm looking at Miranda, and when we were having such a great show, we're locked in. We're talking to each other. Amber's to my to my left here, and Dave walks through the st- through the door, and all I see is he looks at Amber, and he goes, "Yeah, <laughs> hands up! Hands what up. the hell, motherfucker!" And, and then and I think Miranda, I shot her a bird. And later. Miranda Miranda looks sees it. She had her peripheral. She kind of glances. Then she looks at me funny. I look at her funny. <laughs> we're looking at each other funny. And they then, don't know what the hell is going on. Yeah, we have on. no idea what's going on. And then Dave sits down, and then it's all back to, you know. Yeah. You know, and then, and still, we didn't know. It wasn't until after the show. Yeah, until Miranda already were, left. We'd already ate. We went out to eat and everything afterwards. And and to this day, I think our, Miranda is finding out right, right now, now yeah. for the very first yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. So, Actually, I, I did tell her, you know, because we had dinner after the show, and, and I addressed it in a way that was like... You think she understood? I don't know if she did or not. I mean, I, I wasn't like, hey, I chucked a giant fucking turd <laughs> and left it for Dave. I was just like, I, I did something that was, you know, I'm sorry. I got embarrassed. Dave called me out on it. That's all it was. We weren't laughing at you. Yeah. Okay. Because you know? huh. I, I didn't want her to think that, you know, that we were laughing at her because we weren't, but... So, look, so here's the story. If you go back to Miranda's show, uh, if you haven't watched it, go back and you got to watch the video. There's no, there's no audio there's no, or like, no video. No, vi- no that video. Was, that it was we straight posted. audio. We were testing. Oh, that was. Oh, we really? were testing video, but we never, it didn't have any audio to it. And I will, tr- I, I have the video. Holy sh- Okay, because I, I know that video. we saw the video. Yeah, I have the video. And what I'll do, I will work hard on clipping it out and we'll put it on Instagram or the webpage or something oh and or post God. it up on, on YouTube and try to. Uh, Try to get this. So okay. I thought we were on video back then because well, I know that we saw it. We yeah, had, we were just testing. Yeah, we were just yeah, had a little video thing oh going on the God. background. We didn't have the nice uh, big new camera. We had the yeah. the little webcam and and stuff like that. But no, that was classic. That but was yeah, funny. It was good. <laughs> so my poor lady. Yeah, we, what sorry. can I say? I feed her well. You know, I got to take care of her. You know, she uh, <laughs> clearly <laughs> you clearly feed her well. <laughs> get healthy shit every once in no. a while. Clean no those doubt. pipes out. So let me ask you this. So I I ran into a situation where 
I had. Well, let me. Uh, I got to be careful how I pose this question. So I'm going to ask Chris first because I'm confident in his response, and then I'll come to you. Okay. So let's say I have a date tomorrow night. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go out with this girl. It's a themed restaurant that say that you're interested in. Okay. Whether it be Italian, Cuban, okay. Jiu uh, Jitsu, whatever. <laughs> Fucking Brazil. whatever, <laughs> whatever our our common interest is. Sure. You, my buddy, and we have a common interest in it. But you know, I have a date, and it's a brand new restaurant. Okay, and and I say to you, hey man, listen, I'm taking this girl to a restaurant tomorrow night. Come to it because I want you to experience it. I want to share it with you because you, my buddy. But after the restaurant, I need you to kind of bounce. Yeah, disappear. Yeah. yeah. Is that a fair request or no? That's a great request. Thank you. I did that today, and I'm going to tell you, I got a real (laughs) sour response from a girl, another girl. Did you take the, the, the girl was your buddy, so you went, you went to eat somewhere. I haven't done it yet. This is tomorrow night. This is real time. Oh, so you asked the girl the same question. So I'm going on a date tomorrow night, right. and another girl, I said, hey, listen, if you want to experience this restaurant, oh, I want okay. to be on a date. So so I, you're courting one female. And you asked the other and one to go. you asked a second female friend to go, but to bounce after dinner. Right. right. And the, well, That's a little different. That's a little. It, it is. I'm gonna ask women you, I'm, are sensitive. Women are sensitive, and, I, and I'll say this. It makes sense guy stuff, okay? Guy, we're... we're and plus, here's the thing, in my opinion, and Amber will be Well, up. and I wanted to get her yeah. opinion because but I knew Amber, it would be But Amber will fix me if, if, if or, or beat me up on my opinion. Can't fix me, it's my opinion. If you got me in that scenario where you said, uh, yeah, come on and do that, that same scenario, it wouldn't look as awkward to the date that I showed up to experience this restaurant than maybe it would if... You're taking this young lady on a date, and another chick shows up. So it's almost like you're double dating. Your, your, your. I'm, I'm getting a two for, two date for one kind of situation. Then that's my opinion. Now that's if your date date doesn't know. She knows the other girl. Okay, well she knows the other girl, that's and they're different. friends. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but so it's not a strange, not a strange. But woman. you see what I'm saying? Okay. But what I'm saying is, is, and it's also the the level of the date. I don't know how many dates you've taken this young lady on. If this is your first real date, I wouldn't take no fucking body. No, but, I wouldn't do it if it was a first date. This is like number four. That's fair then. I, I, that's what I say. Yeah, that's okay. Give it but to me. But you and the other two, you, the woman that you're trying to date, and the, the other woman, the friend, y'all are all... Buddies. Yeah, buddy, buddy. Yeah. Okay. Well, <clears throat> like he said... Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, Let me put it this way. One of them, without divulging too much, one of them, the one that I'm going on the date with is, is the girl that came to the comedy club that Joe made a scene on top of. Nice. Okay. You, you remember? Is she, yeah, is she the friend or the date? She's the date. Okay. And so then there's a third Yeah. mutual friend that is also a female. Right. Okay. Which... What are the chances that the the third mutual female friend is interested in dating Zero. You? Zero. Yeah. Okay. Then Oh, it's my, not that one, is it? No. Okay. And I'm uh, not going to say it on the air, yeah, but trust my, me, it's a zero. My go-to would be to say that um, the third mutual female friend... Just sit out? Yeah, that you've asked to have dinner <laughs> and then leave... Uh, maybe is competing for the attention of the other female, whether it's in a friendly manner no, or I th- not. I, th- I think the third, I think the the second female is trying to is hypersensitive woman trying to look out for her woman power. You know, stick together. She didn't want she doesn't want the other girl to get her feelings hurt, not knowing whether she would or not. So she just thinks that, well, if that was me, I wouldn't want some guy bringing some other chick around on my date. I think you're totally fucking wrong. I think he's totally right, (laughs) actually. I don't. I think you're both fucking wrong. 
No. What is, I'm saying the girl's looking out for her buddy. She is, because they're friends. Yeah, she's looking out for her buddy. She's thinking... They're totally friends. She's thinking... Yeah, it, yeah. but it, yes, they're friends, but it's not fight the power, fuck the man. It's, that's my friend. I want to fucking hang out with my friend. You can fucking leave after dinner. Who, me? Yeah. yeah. Fuck that. I'm just... <laughs> I'm paying for dinner. <laughs> well, you I, I, I'm you my, asked for my opinion. I'm, I'm just getting, telling you. I don't think I'm it's... I'm getting her angle. I think the girl's just trying to look out for her buddy and saying that if it, if she was being taken on a date, she wouldn't want no guy to bring another girl along to eat with them. No, that's bullshit because if why you would knew, you be fine with going to dinner with them but you're butthurt about being asked that to is leave a good after point. dinner? That is a great point. Now, was she butthurt over the dinner or just going to dinner or having to leave after She's dinner? She's butthurt about having to leave after dinner, right? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. okay, now... That's... I'm, now, well, she's my friend too. I want to hang out I, with her. Here's the way I posed it. Or she's I said, like, "Fuck I, you! If you invite me to one thing, I'm coming to all of it." I told her the situation because we're gonna go to a rooftop bar afterwards. Women are not good wingmen. No, no shit. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> I said we're gonna go to a rooftop bar afterwards. I said, if you had something else to do after dinner. I'd be okay with that. Bounce. That's what I said. <laughs> that was as nice as I could put it. Yeah. You know, and to me, that's Bounce, pretty nice. Bitch. Yeah. I was trying to be nice. I'm just, I'm just trying to be funny. Find something else to do Bounce. after dinner. <laughs> okay. And that was it. Well, and, it's, and, look. But I wanted you to experience, because I knew that this restaurant was important to you. I wanted you to experience with me. I know it's important. Let's do it. Let's do it. But you're, you're, you are an inclusive guy. You like for your buddies, if you're friends with somebody, you like for everybody to be involved. Yeah. But you were just you were just drawing the line in the sand. Look, look. After dinner, women I, don't take. Yeah. You, I mean, after dinner, I gotta get on the Especially shit clock. like that. Yeah. You know, pe- people say men don't take hints or don't take clues. But, you know, with stuff like that with, with a woman, I mean, you're just going to have to fucking suck it up and deal with her butthurt feelings because some women are very, very sensitive and they don't read She's between fair. the lines. Just say, look, I'm trying to wine and dine and get my dick wet and I want to take her to this romantic place. I, right. but, but you're my buddy. I want you to join us for dinner. But then, skirt, get lost. Yeah. Or bring I, your own sausage. I thought I said that. And yeah. She's between sausage right now. Well. And, that's, and that's probably that's probably a lot of it, too. It's not so much that her wanting your attention or to fuck the other girl up. She probably just doesn't want anybody. She doesn't want Dave's attention. She, she wants. Does, she does, yeah, she doesn't. Or even want the other girl's attention. She just doesn't want anybody. If she's in between sausage. She don't she, want anyone to get it, a sausage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's, uh, she's, she's wanting everybody to go vegetarian this, this Fuck week. Fuck that. She, then sit your ass at home. <laughs> all right? And don't eat what I fucking eat at the nice restaurant. <laughs> I'll send you a picture on Instagram. There you go. Come <laughs> See what you're missing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I just wanted to get y'all's feedback. And Chris, I figured we, we would be on the same page. And y'all right had some or, good- Right or wrong, I think our, our thought patterns are the same. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So... But speaking but, of, and we can plug these people because I, I, we don't have anything to do with them, but we ate at that Kerrigan's place. Dude, that, that shit was pretty good. I went there for a wedding reception, uh-huh. and I got fucked up. They hear me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, that's not a plug. I'm just telling you. It was an open bar, and shit went down. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. They actually probably, that's like an anti-plug, maybe. <laughs> but that bar was badass, dude. Yeah, it I like that place. game on yeah, over there. I liked it. We danced, we sang, we ate. It was, that was my first time over there. It, it was very nice. That a, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey, go on, hit that one on me, please, just a little bit. Give me my buddy. They had a payphone in the back. and our, our, Missed it. I know, I really wanted to run it there and... Yeah, we thought a, we thought, thought he my number would yeah, be in there. Yeah, I didn't see that. Oh, Dave. So we went. <laughs> that was the night, and I'm ashamed to say this, but that was the night when I canceled oh, on God. you on a podcast one night. Oh yeah, remember I was at a I was at a uh, a, a New Orleans style restaurant with with a girlfriend. I and, think so. And it, it broke my heart because you were so accommodating. And I go, hey, listen, man, 
you don't know this, but you were on speakerphone in the car. Oh yeah. And I go, I go, hey, <laughs> I go, I'm gonna have to cancel. And you go, hey, that's okay. Just next time, give me a little more notice. And I hung up. I hung up the phone and I turned to her because it was on speakerphone. And I go. That motherfucker just broke my heart because he was so nice about it. I go, I love that guy. That really hurt me. It would have been better if he would have cussed me out right there. <laughs> did she laugh? But she did laugh. But we were in a six-hour drink binge. And then her girlfriend called her and goes, hey, I'm going to a wedding, wedding reception at Kerrigan's, and it's an open bar. What are you and Dave doing? And we were already full wow. on. We yeah. were six hours in, and we go – Bitch, we're on our way. <laughs> and so that was my first wedding reception with a shirt, shorts, and flip flops ever in my life. Really? Yeah, Probably yeah. the last one I'll ever be at. <laughs> and we smashed that shit till two a.m. I'm oh, gonna tell no you. Shit. Oh, it was it was brutal. Yeah. But if you have a chance to go there, it is a badass. But the ups, did you go upstairs? We didn't go upstairs though. We I think downstairs. that's for. Uh, events upstairs. No, I mean, it was, a, well, there's a upstairs part that's blocked up, but then there's like, you can go outside to the up, yeah. upstairs, outside mm -hmm. thing. That's where we were, yeah. up on the balcony and yeah. all that. <clears throat> we didn't go up there. Woohoo, we boy. We were staying there. Yeah. Cool Probably got a few people pregnant up there that night. That <laughs> shit got <laughs> real. <laughs> <laughs> Little skirt started sliding up. That was a fucking wow that shit boy let me tell you that right there yeah but you remember the night i called you yeah, and i can't i, 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 I genuinely felt bad i, oh, I really did yeah because i don't mean to cancel on you and i i confessed how much i love you too and <laughs> and y'all were you were so nice about yeah, yeah whatever it happens i get it man just let me know next time and i was like god damn it God, why would you fucking be so nice about it? <laughs> That's so backwards. It's like, like why couldn't you just cuss me out? Why you have to be so nice? Right, yeah. So, but anyways, Kerrigan's badass place. Yeah. You get a chance, yeah, check man. it the out. The food was good. Yeah. It was very good. They catered that thing, and it was, whoo, it was on what point. What we get, like, a, some kind of steak with the potatoes and yeah, carrots? Yeah, that steak was cooked excellent. It was Dark on the outside, medium rare on the inside. When I say dark on that, they pan seared that damn thing. I'm I'm hungry just thinking about mm -hmm. it now. But and they threw this little bit of gravy over it. My mouth's watering, dude. That shit was fantastic. Yeah, and then know. I had like a fried uh, tempura fried chicken with some yes. grits or something. Yeah, yeah, it was it was really good. Yeah, they had oh appetizers, everything. I mean, they, the place is on point yeah, over there. Very clean. I oh, like it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Everything was, I mean, flawless. And they have parking. Oh, yeah. I couldn't believe That's it. That's a fucking That's a huge Huge plus. thing. They got great yeah. parking. You park lot. across the street over there at their... Uh, yeah, they're a little... Right there when you walk out the door and you behind see the, the building. Little, yeah, behind yep. the building. Yep. Yeah. Great. Oh, no. Oh, it was tight. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely, definitely recommend it. Yeah. So. Shit, I'm hungry now. That's right. <laughs> Let's all go to Cary. Everybody's going to Cary. <laughs> Where are we at on this thing? Let's see... Uh, where are we at? Hold on a second. Hey, Amber, actually, why don't you go ahead and hit us? What's that phone number to this place? It is 205-779-8474. Boom. Boom. We got right it sketched on, the wall. on the wall. And everybody remember, we're, we're on multiple platforms. Uh, we're on YouTube. We're on Spotify. We're on a bunch of others I can't mention because of conflicts of agreements that you do but find uh, us find like us, us subscribe us. rate review Dude. share us tell everybody if there's something that we could do better let us know for yeah, something that we're doing call great us, let, let us, us know. know leave a comment listen call the number leave a voicemail we would love to play your voicemail yeah if it's something that we can fit into the show we'll play your voicemail on the show we'll talk about it we'll, and laugh. we'll talk about it yeah. sure Y'all write in and uh, tell me about your your shit stories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me know that I'm not alone. I'm not the only one that let a turd marinate. 
Jesus. <laughs> so, uh, anything related to today's show? Anything on the wall? Yeah, call in, leave, Any, a, leave a story. And anything you're looking for, and let guys, us know. Guys, pull, pull that back up. Uh, Peter's uh, Instagram, please follow him. Oh, yeah. You guys, if you're not already following him, he is fantastic. He did such a great job. This is all, everything that you see behind me here, this is all uh, Sharpies, uh, paint pens. He did all of this in like free two hand, weeks. Like yeah, it. free hand. He's absolutely amazing. And if you're looking at the video, you're seeing it behind me. It's it's a little wonky right now. It's propped up on a table. But, you know, again, if you're watching the video, you've noticed we've got a new desk. You know, absolutely. we've got new artwork behind us. There are more things coming. You know, we're going to hang the um, mural properly. We're, you know, planning to do some badass little light effects and paint in the wall. We've got more stuff coming. Just hang in there with us. We're improving every day. But if you're not following Peter on Instagram, please follow him. And it's it's a weird gorilla gorilla. Yeah, Peter gorilla. Uh, gorilla gorilla underscore art. That is G. U E R R I L L A G O R I L L A underscore A R T. That is Peter. Follow him on Instagram. You won't be sad. And if that was long as shit for you, just go to one, go to the go to our Instagram page and look at some of the people we follow, and he's on that list. Right. Peter yeah. Peter T Welm <clears throat> is the easy way to look. W I L M Peter T Welm. Just check him out. And he has an art show like we, I don't know if we mentioned it or we not. We did not. Go ahead. Yeah. So he's got an art show tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow being Saturday, July 13th. That is correct. At, uh, let's see here. So it's going to be from 6 to 9 tomorrow. P.M.? Uh, uh, yes. Okay. Yes. No, A.M. Yes, P.M. <laughs> <laughs> so, so 1,800, 2,100 hours. Correct. Okay. Let me see here. I've got the um, Christ sakes. I got caught off guard here. Let me find, <laughs> let me find his. Uh, uh, fuck my dead. Here we go. It is from six to nine at four thousand Third Avenue South in Birmingham. From six to nine tomorrow, him and his brother are actually doing an art show. So uh, be sure and check it out. Chris, Amber, correct, and myself will be there. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. I didn't Absolutely. know if you had to work or not. No, so, I'm here, baby. Uh, I, all three of us will be there. So if you can, come on out, support the guy. And I will tell you, you can actually probably go ahead and score some art from him. Absolutely. And uh, he would love to do a, a custom piece for you. But yeah. you will not get – I'm refusing for anybody to get a big – mural like we got because it took us so long between yeah. dave and i looking at each other angrily <laughs> on picking out what we're gonna do in the back of this motherfucker because I, I just would not bend and patience was a virtue so it was a virtue but it took a lot of beer drinking <laughs> and, and a lot socializing. of socializing <laughs> yes to get it so all right why don't you kick this thing off and 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 give us a little music on going out copy that all right everybody we'll talk to you soon yep